Truly great companies, for the most part, have always been great, and the vast majority of good companies never become great. We don't have more great companies, precisely because most companies become quite good. Good is the enemy of great. But the transition from good to great does happen. But how does it happen? To find out, Jim Collins and his team identified companies that made the leap from good results to great results for at least 15 years. They compared these companies to a group of comparison companies that failed to make or sustain the leap. Then they looked for the distinguishing factors. The good to great companies averaged cumulative stock returns 6.9 times the general stock market in the 15 years following their transition points. To put that into perspective, every dollar invested into a fund of the good to great companies in 1965 that was held until January 1st, 2000 would have multiplied 471 times compared to a 56-fold increase in the market. These are remarkable numbers, made more remarkable when you consider that many of these companies had been utterly unremarkable before their transition. Jim and his team looked for companies with 15-year cumulative stock returns at or below the general stock market, punctuated by a transition point. Then, cumulative returns at least three times the market over the next 15 years. 15 years was long enough to avoid one-hit wonders and lucky breaks, and is longer than the tenure of most chief executive officers. This helps separate great companies from companies that happened to have a great leader. And three times the market exceeded the performance of most widely recognized great companies, between 1985 and 2000. Think companies like Coca-Cola, Intel, Walmart, and Disney. Good to great companies also had to demonstrate the good to great pattern independent of their industry. If the industry showed the same pattern, they dropped the company. The final set of companies is as follows. Abbott, Circuit City, Fannie Mae, Gillette, Kimberly Clark, Kroger, Nucor, Philip Morris, Pitney Bowes, Walgreens, and Wells Fargo. Next, they contrasted the good to great companies with comparison companies to determine what differentiated them. There were two sets of comparison companies. The first were direct comparisons, companies in the same industry with the same opportunities and similar resources at the time of transition that showed no change in performance. The second were unsustained comparisons, companies that made a short-term shift from good to great, but failed to maintain the trajectory. This produced a list of 28 companies, 11 good to great companies, 11 direct comparisons, and six unsustained comparisons. The direct comparisons are as follows. Abbott to Upjohn, Circuit City to Silo, Fannie Mae to Great Western, Gillette to Warner Lambert, Kimberly Clark to Scott Paper, Kroger to AMP, Nucor to Bethlehem Steel, Philip Morris to RJ Reynolds, Pitney Bowes to Adressograph, Walgreens to Eckard, and Wells Fargo to Bank of America. The unsustained comparisons are as follows Burroughs, Chrysler, Harris, Hasbro, Rubbermaid, and Teledyne. Then they collected all the articles published on the 28 companies, dating back 50 years or more, coded all the material into categories, interviewed most of the good to great executives who held key positions during the transition, and performed a wide range of qualitative and quantitative analysis. The core of their method was to contrast the good to great companies to the comparisons. Think of their research as akin to looking inside a black box. Each step shed more light on the good to great process. What they didn't find turned out to be some of the most important findings. Larger than life leaders who came from the outside were negatively correlated with taking a company from good to great. 10 of the 11 good to great CEOs came from within. Executive compensation didn't matter. Strategy didn't separate the good to great companies from the comparisons. Both sets had well-defined strategies. 
the good to great companies didn't focus on what to do, rather what not to do, and what to stop doing. Technology accelerated, but did not cause transformations. Mergers and acquisitions played no role in transforming from good to great. Good to great companies paid little attention to managing change, motivating people, or creating alignment. There was no single event that signified the transformation from good to great. Some even reported being unaware of the magnitude of the transformation at the time. And many good to great companies weren't in great industries, and some were in terrible industries. Now, let's go over the framework of concepts and preview what is to come. Think of the transformation as a process of build-up, followed by a breakthrough broken into three stages. Disciplined people, disciplined thought, and disciplined action. Each stage has two key concepts, and wrapping the entire framework is the flywheel, which captures the entire process of going from good to great. Good to great transformations never happened in one fell swoop. Rather, it resembled pushing a giant heavy flywheel in one direction, building momentum until a point of breakthrough. Level 5 Leadership Good to great leaders tend to be self-effacing, quiet, reserved, and even shy. A paradoxical blend of personal humility and professional will. First who, then what. Get the right people on the bus, the wrong people off the bus, the right people in the right seats, then figure out where to go. Confront the brutal facts, yet never lose faith. Every good to great company embraced the Stockdale paradox. Unwavering faith that you can and will prevail, regardless of difficulty, while having the discipline to confront reality, whatever it may be. The hedgehog concept. Simplicity within the three circles. Going from good to great means transcending the curse of competence. If you can't be the best in the world at it, it can't form the basis of a great company. A culture of discipline. When you have disciplined people, you don't need hierarchy, bureaucracy, or excessive controls. Technology accelerators. Technology alone cannot transform a company from good to great. But good to great companies were pioneers in the application of carefully selected technologies. Each of these concepts showed up as a change variable in 100% of the good to great companies and in less than 30% of the comparison companies. Good to great isn't about specific companies or timeframes. It's about identifying principles, the enduring physics of great organizations that remain true and relevant no matter how the world changes around us. Specific applications will change, but the principles will endure. It's about how to take a good organization and turn it into one that produces sustained great results, using whatever definition of results best applies to your organization. Good, being the enemy of great, is not a business problem. It's a human problem. If we can understand what turns good into great, we have something of value.